we can think of stingers in a choir as neurons in the brain. Like these stingers, neurons have to work together to create harmony. And once they do, the results are magnificent. surrounded by rhythm. Like, our nature has provided all kinds of rhythms that we need to sustain ourselves. Our heart rhythm, uh, we're breathing, um, we have a circadian rhythm, and in the brain neurons generate rhythms to understand the environment, to understand everything that's around us. When we move, when we move our arms or our legs, the brain is signaling to the muscles how to move. And these networks, this, this coordinated activity can be read out as brain waves. So Cheng Hong, can you perhaps explain what you're doing here? Um, yes, now I'm recording my own uh, brain signal, we call EEG. So I just uh, um, closed my eyes and then um, you will see a very specific pattern, like brain activity. Compared with now, for example, I opened my eyes, you see another different type of brain activity. So we're looking at a live trace of different parts of your brain? Yes, correct. And could you maybe show one more time, when you close your, close your eyes, what's happening? Yes, and now I'm going to close my eyes. So this signal, which is actually the dominant activity in our whole brain. We call it alpha activity, mainly related to concentration, mm -hmm. the how focused you are and what is your cognitive status. And then I open my eyes. Waves are also important to coordinate all kinds of processes that we do in daily life. They are able to move our body, but they also are very important to remember things. The brain waves are not only important to generate the memory, but we also need them to store the memory. This is particularly done by the brain during sleep. So we know that brain waves are really important in the creation and storage of long-term memories. So how would you study this? Yeah, so we study um, this in mice and the way that we do that is we record from the brains of mice whilst they're performing a behavioural task. And we record the activity of hundreds of neurons using modern techniques. We can then keep recording from the mouse whilst it's sleeping. What we see when the mouse is sleeping is a replay of the activity that was occurring during the day or during the task that the mouse was doing. The rhythmic activity that was happening when the mouse was doing a particular behaviour or in a particular space is then replayed while the mouse is sleeping. And that is key to the formation and storage of long-term memories. two singers are out of sync, we will hear that. For the brain cells, it works the exact same way. The 
and we listen to the brain and we do see that these brain waves are altered. We know that the neurons are not working in harmony as they should do. So the lack of harmony between brain cells can reflect uh, different brain diseases such as Parkinson's disease. Hi Paul. Hi. I'm Ash. Pleasure to meet you today. So you've got a condition called Parkinson's disease, which is a condition that affects the brain and causes slow movements and tremors, but it can also affect memory as well. So could you tell us a little bit about how you first noticed when you had that? Well, about nine years ago, I was working as an office manager and um, in various meetings and things, I'd take down notes and I was finding more and more that when I'd written the notes, I couldn't read them afterwards. So I went to see a GP and she hit the nail on the head and said it was Parkinson's disease. I was started on a very mild dose of medication by the neurologist, but I was sort of hungry for it. Every year I wanted to go up about 100 milligrams. So she suggested DPS. So um, it was decided that I was probably in a suitable condition to have DPS and I thought it would give us some, some advantage. And they explained it all to me and I took in as much as I could and I, my wife was invited to come along as well um, because she has neurological problems as well and I wanted to stay well to look after her. Although we don't know fully how the deep brain stimulation is working, what we think it's doing is um, modifying the brain waves or the brain signals or brain rhythms um, that are responsible for producing the symptoms that you have. There is actually um, an excessive amount of signal at a particular frequency. What we think the deep brain stimulation is doing is reducing the amount of signal at that particular frequency that could be causing your symptoms. So do you feel that the deep brain stimulation has led to any improvement in your symptoms? I mean I had such bad side effects from Parkinson's that most of those have gone. Um, I feel almost cured. I know I'm not cured but um, I'm cured of all the worst bits of Parkinson's. My brain isn't quite as good as it used to be. I forget things. My voice is going a bit, um, but it's nothing compared with what I was going through before. When we listen to the brain, we study this to try and treat diseases. But we can also use the same brain waves to read what the brain is trying to do. We can read these brain waves and use them as a tool. Wow, hello Damien, that is amazing Xiaohong. You just wrote my name using your brain signals. Could you please explain us how it works? Yeah, so this is actually a brain-computer interface uh, speller. So when I want to select one of the letter, I only need to look at that letter. So every time when that letter flash, 
it will give me a visual stimulation. And that visual stimulation will evoke a response in my brain signal. And then we can build a machine learning model to detect that response so that we can uh, identify which letter I'm looking at. So if I understand it correctly, you thought a computer how to read your brain signals and predict which letter you're looking at? Yes. Awesome. So what would be daily life applications of such a model? We could use this as a communication tool for those people who can't talk, who can't use their arms, like paralyze the patient. But they still have a normal brain, so we can potentially build a communication system for them to communicate with external like uh, environment. That's very interesting. So Sheng Hong, can you count us in? Uh, yes, I can try. Four. Three. Two. One. fascinating piece of our body, the most fascinating organ that we have. The brain is housing us, like as a person. By studying the brain, we're studying, I think, the thing that makes us human. Us is a very kind of precious thing, right? The ego is a very precious thing. And 